Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 27 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things up for our part here from turn 37 in the autumn season of 197. And the biggest thing that happened is we repelled Yuan Shao's army and we used the large town uh, to defeat them. We did pay a heavy price. We lost one of our generals. Now, the good news is she's not one of those generals that we treasured. We simply used her to farm uh, rebels and she still would allow us to keep her armor which is now in our inventory we don't have an actual commander to equip this armor you can tell by who can't equip the armor by the color of the armor here so we don't have another yellow character who is not unique we have Cao Cao oh we have Yuan Huan actually hmm. but he shouldn't wear this because you lose expertise and we don't want that because he is currently being a administrator so we want to avoid that. We're going to save that for our son, uh, Cao Pi, who will come of age in the future. Now, even though she has died, her kid, who is part of Jia Long's old faction, will still grow up in our faction and come of age in the future. Now, we have to do a few things. I am thinking about just crushing the army, or we can let it live. Both options have some merits. Crushing them we get some cash and we don't have to worry about any threat and we can probably de-escalate over here for a while. Letting them live is actually also a valid reason in this case because they're so far away, this army can never replenish. So we'll just strand them here being a very feeble army and that takes up one of their army count. Because many players have this misconception where they believe if they keep wiping out enemy armies, the enemy will run out of money. The AI cheats on higher difficulties, they get huge discounts on recruitment, so they'll never run out of money to field more armies. So you pretty much can't drain them out. The best option is to have them field whatever their maximum number of army is on the field and make sure they're all weak and half dead and stuck in your territory far away from where they can get supplies and you're gonna have a great time. So. That is pretty much where things stand. Our next goal is to push this army through Taoying's land. It's time we take all of this. Maybe not Donghai. I don't think Tanxian is that good. He also over leveled it to a large city. We might just ignore that because we also can't complete it because I'm not sure we want to go to war with the Han Empire just yet. So we're probably just looking to pick up the entirety of Sia Pi and also Pengcheng's temple to also reduce their uh, faction satisfaction. This is a 10 point boost and maybe we can get Lady Mi from them after that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shift our attention first to our buildings. Uh, there was a ton of event this turn. I think the most important one we need to look at is just that we got ourselves two items and also Master of Writing. It's a title. I think it's for administrators, we'll go take a look at that later because we haven't been giving our administrators any titles. So she's getting only better. So this is our bandit character or burned officer. I think this is our burned uh, officer. Yeah. So she picked up a great trait, pushing her expertise even higher. She's very young. She's going to be a wonderful administrator in the future. So we should wait for that moment. Right, she's a good character. Uh, they also don't like each other. We might want to just swap a bunch of characters around uh, now that we can reset. And we also have a officer that passed away. And I also realize we also have her who we got the ambush item from. I don't want to actually keep her, so I forgot to fire her. We paid a extra turn of upkeep. Not a big deal. We are missing strategists, so we're hopefully we'll get more, but back back to buildings, which is what we've been intending to do. Dayan here is upgrading the commandery to a large city, then to a small regional city, so we can get an extra slot. And also unlock the level 5 upgrades for all buildings, should we have the reforms, because the requirement for level 5, beside the reforms, is to have a level um, 7, or a small city, a small regional city, as your settlement. We have four more turn of this, so we can boost it one more time. That would be perfect. Dayan is fine just now. YZ is going to go build up all the green buildings. We have the perfect candidate for that. And once that's finished, we're probably going to move him over to northern Jian'an if we can take this back. Because right now, it's not in our hand. 
and the army that we're going to use to take it back is right here. As they're going to knock door to door from each of these rebel groups, we trespass, so we're going to lose some diplomatic values with them. Doesn't really matter. This way this group can get a bunch of experience, then we'll recall them at the end, send them back north, and they can be ideally our second army. This is the group that I actually want to make stronger, chase them down, end them. And we want to go down. Um, This group here might actually help us by keeping them at bay. So I don't know if I need to go kill that, but we definitely need to kill this. And yeah, we're going to pass by, so we might as well. Uh, we'll heal plenty fast with the 10% from buildings. That's the rice garrison patties, um, or rice patty garrisons. And we'll be full healed by the time we get to them, or we get to them. And we can definitely take care of both of them. So that army has moved. Let's see, Huainan can use this for now. I think we do have the option between the two. And in this case, we might opt for the income version here because we do have some income here. And Chen is full build. I am not investing this any higher at this point. We're happy right now. We might push it for a higher tier later. 53, that might take a while. We're gonna fix it. So keeping this at a large town has yielded massive amount of benefits for us as we don't have to recruit a second army to hold things back. All right, everyone's doing fine. All the buildings are done. We have a level up on Zanba, who is going to pick up Reach now. He's also doing great. Um, plus, you already have both. We can split them up since they both have Reach uh, in the future. Right now is, I think the decision is we let them live. And if we let Renshaw bounce back next turn, we can fight them at that time. And we can try to capture him at that time and get his item. That Philosopher item is 10 points of satisfaction, which is rather good. Now this unit here, we were paying for the upkeeps on these unit just in case we need to go rescue. Now that's not required, so we can get rid of everyone and all their units and recall them. I think we need to reset our armies in the north now that we have one general who passed away. I want to know who can get along with this army, because I'm keeping them on the field for sure. Huaxiong and Zanba, so neither. Oh no, she can. Okay, our burn officer can. She can't. Our, this is our bandit character. So we're going to recall her. Perfect. So this army is great. Uh, we get an extra burned officer to debuff enemy range damage and they can defend here and farm rebels because this is our last place where they have actual tax collection. But because we kept them alive for so long, uh, we didn't have to utilize that. Matter of fact, they don't need to be alive anymore. I want to farm rebels here. This is one of the few places where we still want to farm. So let's kick them in the face. We caught him. We're only going to release for extra money. And yeah, we're going to do the chase down here. Perfect. And we're going to... Oh, they can't run back. That could be a problem. They can't go past the town either, but they can attack them. We also can't ambush. How far can we move on? Okay, we can march back. That's okay. So because we can't heal on march, she's so low, we're going to recall her and then send her back out again. Now this army also has some relationship issues. This is also a burn officer. I'm going to just recall this whole group. We don't need a army here for now. One is good enough just to keep an eye on them. And then we can shift this one over soon. I could just... Hmm. Right, we could just summon a new one here next turn to take care of this and that. And this group, which is much better in terms of generals, like we want the second army to beat this group, can shift back to the capital through a recall. So we're going to just massively shift our army deployment in the next couple turns. We only have... 
seven redeployment slots because now we have this as well so plus two and then we also have it in Chen so that's plus four total so we have the base three so that's seven points we can summon seven generals next turn which is perfect because we'll summon four here using one proxy to attack them and then three over here of the three generals we just summoned back so they can prepare to train up a full army as we look to join forces with our main army to attack uh, Tao Ying's faction. And before we get there, we have a siege battle to fight. An actual siege battle. I am not delegating for pure victory with medium casualties. We are just going to fight them with our trebuchets. They don't have any military infrastructure. They do have a pretty sizable garrison and units. Um, hmm. It's such a shame. Some of these generals are great historical characters. Ooh, Master Craftsman is an excellent item. We would love to get a capture, but because they're stuck in garrisons, what's going to happen is if we don't get this capture, they're just going to perish and die from the garrison wipe, which is most likely what will happen. But let's give it a shot. Alrighty, so we're loaded up in here and we can have a real siege battle and show the AI how it should be done. This city here is actually very uniform as you can see it's a square and we don't necessarily need to pick a side because they're all the same even the interior you have four stacks of towers guarding each one so we're probably going to attack one of the corners and hopefully make things a bit easier on ourselves now ideally we want to hit more fort towers versus arrow towers because it's harder to hit arrow towers accurately so we don't want to hit here where we would have to remove three uh, to start advancing in and that includes two arrow towers ideally any of these location will be good because we have to just take out two four towers and one arrow tower or potentially hmm, no the arrow tower range is too high like if we want to go through a piece of wall like this we have to clear these three maybe not this one maybe if we just go through here we could cheat out a little bit and not fire this one Hmm. I think we like where we are. It's not bad. Uh, elevation wise, perhaps that side might be better because it's slightly higher. Uh, not true. I mean, it's higher than back, but we don't need it. We can't be that far away. So we'll just stand here. I'm going to pull everything back a little bit. And the standard approach is we have fire now, so it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we haven't had an actual fire weapon siege. This tower is slightly annoying, but it's not that bad if we just attack through here. You want to be about centered with your middle target, because that minimizes your distance with each of your target. And then we can send the other units up during battle. I guess we can get them closer just so that there's less time. And what we want to do here... Now obviously if you want to thin out the enemy at the front, if you want to clean charge in, you could obviously spread your troops like some of your cavalry or some of your spear guards all around, force them to redeploy different locations, which is something we showcased before. But in this case I'm pretty confident we can just crush them at this front. And what we're going to do is just fire one volley at each of the structures. You want to pay attention this time to fire damage. Oh you see that was overkill. Once the fire damage ticks over 50%, if it's 51%, that's good enough. The fire damage will continue to grow until it hits 100%. And then at that point, the damage will continue to grow like it's doing now until it completely burns down. So because we're pretty high level, we hit it very accurately. So maybe we just need one to hit instead of using both. Okay, so yeah, that's the both was overkill. Even one, we had enough accuracy to nail it. So you see that the fire is going to tick up and the damage is going to tick up after that point. Now this one's going to be slightly higher, but maybe let's use the level 8 one because we'll be getting more accurate here. The level 7 can be used to burn the rest of the town because fire damage is very good at demoralizing the troops by causing settlement damage. Now let's see if we can get a lucky hit here. Uh, down to have some disappointment as we whiff right here. Let's trust and let them fire again. That might do it. Let's stop. Oh no way! That made con that made contact. How did that not hit? 
That is ridiculous. That's why we want to avoid hitting arrow towers. If you have archers that have fire arrow, perhaps they're better at shooting down arrow towers. You'll lose a few units walking up to them. But um, it's quicker and saves you some ammo that otherwise could... Like, that's a direct hit. Okay, that's 90% already. We just needed one direct hit. But it took us three volleys to get... Well, there we go. Two direct hits. Overkill. What do you know? Alright, they also shifted up. We can now move up a little bit. It's fine. Get us closer to all targets. Ideally, we want to burn down these towers. You see that one of the missed shots hit the town here and it's spread. And this tower is gone. So we just need to lay a couple shots in each of the districts. Burn the town, uh, town down. Kill the towers, obviously. And also demoralize the unit with the damage inside. You can see it's ready. 7 damage on morale is already happening. Alright, you... One shot into this zone. Just use the manual firing. Alt right click. And let them go to town. Make sure you save enough ammo to crack the walls. And then one shot here. You can fire one shot here. And we can see the fire spread. Now obviously the, the drawback of this strategy is most of your buildings will be pretty burnt. When you pick it up, you have to repair stuff. But most of these buildings in this settlement will be tearing down. I don't like the way they build things. We'll keep a few, but it makes the fight a lot easier because the settlement damage is going to tick up as most of the settlement burns. Um, it is very slow moving, but that's fine. Alright, they're burning down. Who's on the right side? You. Put a shot over here, please. And these are the actual buildings. You can see land serving office. That's a land development. You can see the fire damage being passed on and ticking up on the damage. Uh, this is one of the few Total War games, like the classic Total Wars, where you can actually have the buildings that you built show up in the town when you siege it. This was a feature in many of the old Total War games, and they took it away from some of the newer ones. Oh, did we not light this part up? 49%. So you see here, we didn't get over 50% on any of the buildings. What a failure here. But we didn't... Oh, actually... There's a fire here. We didn't have to shoot it. It will spread, but this is fine too. Yeah, one scratch. 46%. Alright, we want to... We can bomb the center building too. We're just pushing our luck here by trying to burn everything down. If we get lucky here... I think if we move it up a little, depending on how far the enemy ranges, we can spread it to the other zone as well. Yeah, this is me being arsonist here in the game. It's very effective. Now, how did these not catch on fire? Like, it stopped right here. What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> Alright, they got into range and now we're getting damaged. We could have done this. Walk them up and the shield can actually protect them. And we could also march these guys up to uh, tank all the arrows beforehand as we are getting shredded here. Losing men left and right. Alright, the fire has done its thing. How much morale did we get? Four points. Not impressed. These towers didn't go down either and some of these towns didn't catch fire. Not happy. We will take out these towers because that need to be cleared before we get to the plaza. So that's got to go. Obviously, maybe slightly overkill. Let's spread the shot out. Alright, turtle formation right here to protect them. The shield will actually protect your units who's underneath. It's not just the unit themselves will take no damage. There we go. Nailed them. Did we fire extra one? No, that's just a stray shot. Oh, now we gotta take out walls. When you attack walls, you wanna use the standard round. You don't wanna use the fire round. It's not as effective against the walls. 
and we want to see where the last range is. So here, we'll start cracking these walls here. These three pieces, one here, one here, one here. 50%, that's actually a good number because anything higher than 50, the unit on top will start running away. And at 50, it seems like our next, uh, uh, he's, our next volley could just end it. And maybe we can kill a unit? Ah, nobody. Alright, we're gonna create a couple cracks in the wall to free up our units to get inside. Cavalry come to the side. We're gonna outrange their archers with our crossbowmen. But ideally, we want them to just waste their ammo. There's not that many ammo. There we go. Some of them died there. I'm gonna open this up as well. We have the ammo for it. What's out here is burned officer as well, so we have extra ammo and they also lose out some ammo. Alright, that's pretty much all the gaps we need for advancing in. You can see how the range ends right here. Now it's just which target do we want to use the rest of our ammo to crush? Because we got flaming boulders that we can use. So they have a bunch of archers who just on the wall. We could try to get rid of them. Because this is pretty effective in killing that group. And then they're useless because the way the range will work is like they will fire into like this gap here. So they can't face the way we're coming in. Oh, in this case, don't fire. Because, oh, don't, don't destroy it just yet. Because they ran away. The purpose of crushing these walls is not to open a space. It's just to make sure they can't, if they get killed. All right, we're going to prepare our second group. I'm debating whether we want to just go tank it up. It's not that many shots. Some of them will go back and then we'll crush it. Oh, this is perfect. Can we get a shot just land right about? There we go. How many ammo do we have? Two, four? Okay. I'm not disillusioned enough to think we can be that accurate. We can try. Usually AIs will just run when they see the shot coming. Oh. They try to run, but not too bad. Could have been worse. That was actually decent. We got some kills, I think. Yeah, that's a horse running away. Seventy archers left. Okay. I think we did our job. We burned a lot of the town, and we have a few shots left. I think we just cracked some walls at this point. Hmm. The most annoying unit is the Spear Guard and the Cavalry, but I don't think we have a good shot on them. Like, this is not going to work because of that wall. Oh, you know what? Let's crack this wall. Nice. And then we can probably throw a couple shots at the Cavalry again. Assuming they clear that space. I'm going to run these guys up. 85% range block chance, they're born to absorb arrows, just go do it. Alright, pray. Pray for accuracy. Mm, not great. Alright, he's out of ammo, we have one more shot to play around right here. Yeah, they're firing, that's fine, that's what we want them to do. See, we can't clear this part, and that's what's really annoying here. We can try to move back, and then we can clear it. Alright, here we go. Tanking. Probably want to lose. Okay. And then we'll shoot at the Z infantry. Maybe we created enough angle here, let's see. Because when you're farther, you actually... Uh, why don't they just lop the rock a little bit higher? 
I don't think that's gonna work. I guess we'll move even farther. All right, they're out. They're out. 12 more on them. Four more on them. All right, our time. Congratulations, you guys managed to kill 11 cavalry units with hundreds and hundreds of arrows. Alright, let's test out the distance. Oh, can you guys wait? Wait, not ready yet. Oh, that sort of did it. Ah, uh, I just... I don't think it's gonna work. Maybe. Ooh! Alright. Physics. Okay. Alright, time to target units. So they use the smoke screen. This is an ability you can acquire from the reform tree, which hides them from vision for a little bit until they either do stuff or until it times out. We're gonna wait till it times out to kill the spear, uh, the D militia here. That's the unit we want to kill. There we go. Now we shred them. Watch them die. I believe they're routing. That's my guess. Nope, they're not routed. Wow, stubborn them. Alright, we'll fire these, the, the infantry captains. Well, they have a pretty good view of our army. Crossbows reloading. No firing angle? We can't fire on them? Well, their range is all out, so we can move up as close as we want. They did their job perfectly. Now we just gotta wipe out enemy units. That's gotta be a route, right? There we go. This is what happens when you don't bring a shield to war. Saber Cavalry is going to have a hard time for us to kill, but we can kill these mounted Lancers. As I believe these guys are going to rout soon. Alright, you guys don't want to rout? Okay, I'll shoot you again. Their shield is not facing the right direction. If we can arc it over the wall, which I don't know if we can. Oh, we can. Look at that arc. Crossbows? Wow. I thought they nerfed this. Well, if we can do this, it's pretty insane. Well, they have their shields up, so they're blocking us. But this is the only threatening unit left, so we're going to dump our ammo in them. Archer moved up. Try to kill off the rest of these. Right. they routed. I guess we'll try to kill the spear guards. I guess we'll put them in two. Right, I'm gonna dump the arrows into a wasteful unit, but it's the only thing that's threatening left. These, I don't really care because they're out of position. I mean, sure, we have to eventually kill them, but these are just actually in the front. Doesn't matter how great your range block chance is, if there's enough arrows, you're going down. And plus, you're not facing the right direction. Okay, I believe now some of the spear units will come close, but we're going to unleash our shock cavalry. 
the next phase. Let's go. Any spear that tried to come over, we'll wipe out. Are there any wooden stakes here? No. Okay. They have a bunch of deployables, so I was worried. Charge! Oh, wow. Just cleanly charged through. Oh, the second wave. The guy... That guy broke late. Okay. See, these guys are actually going to fight back because of the fact that they have no ammo. Oh, they smoke screened it. I would crack him. She was the one willing to be our spy. We're gonna wait till the spear unit shows up again, and then we're gonna dump arrows on him. Meanwhile, our cavalry is gonna have fun with the general. Oh. They threw some traps on the ground, which will kill cavalry. They have a lot of battle deployables. Alright, let's just kill her and then move on into the... We're gonna move in. We're also gonna move in. I'm not gonna move the spear, the spears are too slow. We're going to have to go through this side because we have access here with the towers down. Actually, we don't... I mean, it doesn't matter if we kill her or not. The end result's the same. Uh, but I don't want to go into the tower. We don't have to. They have barricades. Oh, they're coming down. Fire, fire, fire. You don't have ammo, you can stay put. General's gonna go in. Tag them a little bit. Oh, they have the fire on the ground. This is the oil patch. They have a lot of deployables. It burned. Oh my god. One of the flaming shots must have tagged it, and it actually burned a bunch of their troops here. Oh, no, 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 we are not charging, we are not charging into spear units, what are we doing? We have archers for a reason. Let's see. Anyone unbreakable? No, no one's unbreakable, we'll just kill the units, force them to rout. No big deal. All right, they're all routing. We win. Slow siege, but get the job done cleanly. Alrighty, so we're just gonna occupy here. They all died, uh, despite fighting a decisive victory, which is better than the Pyrrhic victory that they were offering. We probably had a higher capture chance. We just weren't able to capture anyone. Didn't get any item drop either, which is unfortunate. Uh, we'll take the occupy. And. We killed the leader, so the heir takes over, but then the faction is destroyed. The heir now goes onto someone's pool with a grudge against us because we are the one who wiped them out. Guajia ranked up, which is key because we're going for precision, extra range armor piercing damage, which will help all the crossbow units, and then almost there for composure. We should have upgraded away from archer militias a long time ago because we do have access to archers, which is a much better unit than archer militia. And we should definitely get that swap done right now. Alright, and they will heal up pretty quickly as we did the swap instead of new recruits. And we're going to advance on. Now, why do we not just go for more crossbowmen? The reason is because I like the fire arrow aspect of the archers. And he's one skill away from getting fire arrows. So we're almost there. We have the book, right? Yes, we can give him extra... Ambush chance for army, and I want to take his title away now, but it does give something for the army, so that's fine. Alright, so we got that fight out of the way. Let's take a look at the commandery. 
Luckily, none of the building reflects the fact we just burned the town down. Apparently it's fine. Let's see, this is a trade port, so that's commerce income, and then food, which is no income, but we can convert it to a uh, garrison. Which will give local replenishment and more food, but at a higher cost. We might not need that, it's not like a rice. The grain ones are not that useful. So food makes sense, commerce makes sense, commerce boosting makes sense. We can ignore the food and make this just a standard commerce and industry utilizing the trade port and this would just be a small food bonus on top with a slight economic drain. I could deal with that. So in that case, it's not really a food commandery, it's more a commerce commandery. Therefore, we get rid of this and we build a state workshop, which will work together with the industry here. And also, we want the corruption reducing version to help reduce the corruption of nearby um, uh, commanders as well. So that's going to work out. We recalled most of our generals. Is there anyone we want to summon this turn? Not really. Everyone's on assignment except for Guo Si. Cao Ang is also has nothing to do. That's our son. He's not that outstanding, so... Yeah. He's going to chill for a little bit. Before we end turn, I always have a habit of checking for turncoats. Right, we have a Liu Bei turncoat, which could be very interesting. We could utilize a lot of those techniques to try to trigger some of his generals to leave him. Usually a very hard thing to do with Liu Bei. He's very good at keeping his characters happy, but she is already cracking, so perhaps it might be a worthy investment. I'm thinking about raising a second army soon, so maybe we'll save money for now and skip that. I don't need to change any of the courts. I could probably get new missions. We're missing this one for settlement. Let's see, do we have any settlement upgrade? Two more turns for Danyang. Okay, so we'll wait for that. Let's finish that first before we invoke and abort that. Diplomacy check. We have over 25 points. If we don't want to save for proxy war, we would use it. But I think we might just want to save for a proxy war. We can't go back to a war with him and the Han Empire because we have 7 turn deals with that peace deal, which means it's at least 12 more turns before we can properly declare war. That's not happening. Let's just check quick deal 4.9, not bad. Taima wants a non-aggression pack. That could happen, but not right away. Eventually, Liu Bei might become a vassal if we continue to improve our relationship with him to the point where we can just confederate him after making him a vassal. We can annex him. That might be our long-term goal. Then we can take most of his characters. All right, we're good to go. We checked everything. Let's continue. Right, Domian wants to vassalize us. No way. Reject. And the Yellow Turban Rebels are actually attacking our settlement, which is rather easy delegate. They presented more issues when they weren't actively attacking. Burned officer. Amazing. Too bad we can't recruit Yellow Turbans. All right, Bill Bill going to war with Domian's faction. Wow. How many friends does he have? Okay, wow. Uh, we have some new characters. Four. All Sentinels? Interesting. No one have items. Anyone have good traits? Okay, burn trait. Willing to spy. That's an auto hire. No one in particular. Nope, not that interesting. Alright, so we'll grab him. He worked for the High Empire, but he's willing to spy, so he's guaranteed to not be a spy. And what I like to do with so many burn officers, just stack them together in an army. That's like a roaming three unit of burn officers with no retinue. So they just show up at the county that you want to debuff the enemy, they lose 90% ammo right away, and then you just crush them because they show up with archers without any arrows. We've been put back to siege. They're wise enough to not actually attack us again. They're actually very weak. I almost don't want to fight them in case Ventral dies. 
All right, we're going to redeploy our army like we planned, except for we don't need to redeploy here to wipe them out. Oh, they got a second general. Hmm, maybe we do need to wipe them out before they build up more power. Okay, they are replenishing pretty fast here. So over here, we're going to use the proxy technique. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say Yuan Huan we don't want to actually use in a fight. We summon him first. And then before we decide who else goes here, we're going to put out our army candidate here. Just to make sure we don't summon anyone by mistake. And the army that we want is the Dian Wei army. The Dian Wei, Xia Hou Yuan, Xun Yu. This group is going to sit here, get their military supply all up and dandy. We can recruit units if we want, uh, but right now probably not. Then we can see who we have on stairs. So Xu Chu comes to mind. He's doing nothing right now. And let's see who he gets along with. This is a burned officer. We don't necessarily need her to come out. Administrator. Our son gets along with Xu Chu but not Yuan Huan, so that works. And then Huang Long Luo can give us extra income from post-battle loot. So let's summon him. Recall him to get full movement. Summon our third. I, I guess our son can go out there and get some experience. So he's not completely useless. The burn officer I want to stash. Alright, so our son's going out there. We'll keep the retinue on for this turn just because we can utilize them. Nice easy delegate win. I probably should have put Huang Wenbo as the commander because we get 25% more income that way. But he doesn't have reach. So what we will want to do is like flip him to commander, fight the battle, random event that gives him extra experience. Alright, so we want to take this one for another 25% extra post-battle loot. Hmm. We're good. Now we don't need these. We'll keep Xu Chu as the commander for now. Well, actually, he doesn't have reach either. Oh, but he has flexibility for 10% extra replenishment. But he will get reached soon, I guess. Uh, we'll go back here for full replenishment, and then the job of this army is to go wipe them out. Hopefully they would have upgraded here. It seems like they're just not building anything here, which means we just take it back, put the administrator shuffle for Yuan Huan to go over there. Back over here, we used up all our deployment. Um, I think if we click this and just fight back out, we can delegate for a win. Yeah, we don't even need help. Wow, I don't know why they decided to fight us. The problem with this delegate here is we could, by chance, kill him. But, tough luck. I don't want him to siege us. Give us the item. Capture, capture Yuan Shao. He died. Mm. Okay, we got a sword. Oh, more items. Uh, not the one I want. We got his items. Okay, all right, that's fine. We'll take income. Ooh, that resulted in an army wipe? Interesting. Oh, we don't have any more slots, or else I want to put the Burn Officer here, the Sentinel Girl. All right, we have 18k income after those battles. They can finally heal. Let's go back to buildings. Danyang is doing well. Over here, we're also doing well. Let's get these buildings done. So here we could actually make an argument for maxing food production instead of income because this is mainly a heavy food producer here. And this is a completely utilitary or util util utility commandery, just boosting military, boosting food supplies to supply our taller expansions. Chen will eventually follow the same build. They eventually will go here as well. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait for the industrialist. Okay, all the buildings are done. No one new here. 3.3. We'll probably have to wait for him to send another army out. 
Ah, this relationship is interesting. We gotta figure something out with them. This used to be Kong Zhou's faction. The wife has taken over. Five turns of food deal, one trade deal. I would like to get rid of them. They're at war with many factions, but they're... Oh, never mind. They have allies. We can't touch them. Yuan Shao, though. Yeah, Yuan Shao and Lady Yan are... Mm. We could get dragged into a war with them eventually, which is a good news for us. Yeah, I think this, this alliance might actually work in our favor. I guess there's not much to do then. We can just end turn. Let's see what happens next turn. Taoying declares war on us. Perfect. Beat us to the punch. Taimal really wants the non-aggression pack. Not interested in giving him that right now. All right, so we got the war with Taoying that we wanted. We also finished this mission, which means we can invoke faction. We also crafted a new weapon from our weapon craftsman. Fingers crossed to be gold, silver. Not terrible. Uh, we also had 20,000 in our bank, which gets us another title unlock. So we did forget one thing. We had an extra assignment that we didn't utilize, which actually slowed us down a little bit. Hmm. So that's probably going to have to be Lady Bian going back to boosting peasantry somewhere. Who has the highest peasantry? 50 to uh, 25, 235, that's not bad, 235, 235. We have a bunch of livestock, 245, Peng Cheng. Your winner, Lady Bian comes here to boost peasantry income. So they declare war, make things a lot easier for us as we can just advance into their territory. Now, of course, we can run into ambushes or surprises. Maybe we just go to the border first, take a peek, and then advance on Sap Heat. All right, no big deal. That's who we want. They can actually be recalled to heal. They have so little supply and reserve here, they're just suffering. So, let's save them. We want to recruit a full army here. Our second official army. And what we want to do... Let's see. I guess we'll go attack the temple, but first we'll replenish up here. We will... Use a, use a very similar army setup. Oh, oh, before we do that, let's get some saving tricks. We can actually give people titles. Who hates us or who is likely to hate us in the future as they rank up? Is that Hoyuan already kind of slipping? Not really. Friendship. He's friends with everyone in the army. That's why we want the green check mark. Because the red gives you satisfaction debuff, but if you're green, everyone gets happiness here but we can still try to save money and plus we can get the council well, wrong, wrong many we can get the council faction so we can put Xiao Hu Yuan in here this turn grant commandant that saves money for the recruitment giving the army as much instinct as possible also save money on the recruitment as you can see recruitment costs is discounted by everyone's uh, instinct bonus pulled together so we want to equip these when we can. Okay. And then at this point, we would also give out titles, maybe even. This would be an expensive army now, wouldn't it? I wouldn't give it to him. I guess I would give it to Dian Wei. Oh, he's actually an administrator. So I guess Xun Yu will get it because he wouldn't have any titles or positions. And what we would want is we would give him something like General of the Left first, which is 5% discount for recruitment, and then swap him to General of the Right afterward, which gives the whole army retinue discount. So we're maximizing our saving here. General of the Left. Now everything should be super cheap. Let's see. Let's see how much tribuches are, because they're supposed to be a thousand something. Now 700. Two of these, and they start at rank 5, because we have understanding on Cao Cao, plus the plus 3 rank on the conscription. So every unit become very experienced right off the bat. And he does have composure. So because of that, I actually think this army might just be all archers. 
Over here, he has access to our faction unique unit. This army will be cheaper. So we might go for these. They're not that much more expensive than these if you think about it. So we'll grab four of them. Okay, we can we can accept that. So right now this army cost us army of damn weight. Oh, what's house retinue and total's retinue is pretty pricey. Anyways, um, a little bit over two thousand five hundred. And what we're gonna do is swap his title to general of the right. And now it's a little bit less. We save five percent there on this army as they're going to take about two turns to become fully replenished and then we'll charge over here to the temple as we'll take care of sap heat over here you up level ups Tauren leveled up again oh he's going to need a title soon as well keep leveling up uh tenacity of steel oh angry Xiao trunk uh, burn officer so we just want them on the field that's what we need I guess they can participate in the battles here because we have a fine army down here already. Let's first get them over here. We're going to recruit our Burin officers here. He's angry. Doesn't get along with her. The Burin officers don't like each other. But he's also burnt. They like each other. Okay, these two can be together. And the other two girls maybe can get along. So I guess we'll use two men here. Oh, he's angry even with a stone pig. Okay, it's fine. When we get the temple, he'll be happy. And then we're going to summon the other two as well. Where should we summon them? They have no range unit. There's no need to summon them here. I guess in Chen. Oh no, she's not Baron Officer. She's a bandit character. So we only have three Baron Officers. Hmm. You know what? Maybe make friends, but I guess that's not good because then he'll be angry at her. Yeah, that's not going to work. Alright, never mind. We'll just have two. I don't want to make them angry. They're already dissatisfied with us. We'll pick up a new reform. Um, so here's where things will become interesting. We could try to get another trade route. We might have trade partners, given that we're at peace with most factions now. And then we can just focus on two more reforms to get Onyx Dragons. Or we deviate right now, pick this one up so we get the level 4 State Workshop, which we can utilize right away and get the industrialist in Danyang and then eventually go over here and then also invest in this line for this for coin minting uh, this 8% anti-corruption and then the tier 5 copper mine these are all essential and perhaps we don't need onyx dragon right away I do want the industrialist so we're gonna go here which means we can build this now this also means we can't utilize this quick enough, but this unlocks a lot of things for us and also improves our economy. We're going to recall him because we can't use him here for a while. All right, empty slots get filled up first. We said state workshop for a corruption reduction. Over here, I think it's time to upgrade so we can also build a state workshop here for corruption reduction as well. Why not? Now we have access to tier 4, which will give adjacency corruption reduction. That's exactly what we want. Alright, we're good to go. Let's continue here. Oh, Lady Yet. Yeah, this is Liu Chong's old faction. They're right here. Our second army is in the perfect spot. Declares war on us. Because they're allies of Yuan Shao, I believe. Even though they like us. Oh, actually, it's dipped to negative. That makes sense. Perfect. We can expand this way now. 
Okay, so let's let us expand to our Nanahai. This allows us to con control all of Chen finally, and also to expand towards Xu Chang. Luo Jun would be a great capture. Ah, the gold items from Liu Chong. These are those Liu Chong's items. We can't see his items, but he also has a silver and a gold armor. A silver weapon, gold armor. We're gonna stand here to take the heal. We're not gonna move and get rid of the mustering. And if they come siege, they don't have siege weapons, they have to spend at least a turn fighting this. Alright, we will be fighting this army, but what we're going to do is send in the Burren officers to debuff them. But before we do that, let's see what we got this turn. Once again, we have four generals, quick peek. We didn't get council missions last turn. Keep forgetting things. Alright, no Burren buff. Any items? No items. Okay, so we're going to pass on all three. I'm going to siege them first and then move the army after. Tough fight. Um, continue siege. Move them in. I guess they could reinforce as well. Get some experience on them. We'll come back to this fight later. Well, they have another army here. Taoyan Mingzhu resummon themselves. Maybe they'll get dragged into a war declaration as well, that would be nice. He's building up a force, he's going to want to invade us soon, but I don't think he can do it. I might end the episode with this fight, because that's going to be a big fight and we're going to have to wait on that. It's take too long for this episode, so I think we will use the other one. We'll do all the building maintenance real quick, so we don't have to do that next time. What do we want to rush first here? Probably private workshop actually. Multiplier is pretty good. Very fast upgrade. Copper mine tier 3. Thank you. We are out of cash. We have two assignments available. Alright, we'll worry about the assignments next time. Let's get this done first. Someone to Grand Tutor. Very easy. Upgrade a settlement, very easy. Raise a new force, also very easy. So the Grand Tutor is very simple because we wrong menu. Because we want to do that. We don't need a Grand Commandant now that we have recruited army. So Grand Tutor. Voila. Done. Minus one construction time, faction wide, plus ten percent industry. Oh. That means we might need to cancel some builds like this one. Because now it's two turns for the same cost. Same thing, oh this was built last turn so it wouldn't actually need to be cancelled. Right, so we don't want to touch anything else. Alright, so that's done. Let's get this fight and use the fight as a save point. Oh, we're not at war with Yellowstone Rebels? They stole our land and we are not at war with them. Because it was like an independent rebel group and then after they took it they become a faction. And this is going to end the faction right here. Alright, Yellow Turban Rebels destroyed. It's still nothing. Yeah, we'll have to build this ourselves, but that will also finish one of the missions, which is nice. We'll come back and do that. This army can be recalled. I believe we're going to send them back over here. They're going to hover over one of our land, as this army is now instead going to go attack this way. I guess we'll pick up our farmland after we wipe out their army. So we'll probably go here into here. And we'll expand this way, pick up Xu Chang, which was the capital of Cao Cao's faction for a long time. And we'll come back to that. See you guys then. Bye!